Let the record show that a quorum of members is present, that this meeting has been duly called, and that notice of this meeting has been posted in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code, Chapter 551. The time is 6.02. If you would stand with me as Mr. Husbands leads our invocation and Mrs. Haynes leads our Pledge of Allegiance. Goodbye in prayer with me, please. Gracious God, stand in awe wonder of your power and thankful for your grace. We thank you for all the many blessings that you bestowed upon this district and this community. And Father, that we ask that you continue to bless each student, each staff member, and the proceedings that go on tonight, that they all may be within your will and pleasing in your sight. We ask uh, your continued blessings, your grace, and your comfort on the kid family tonight and just an extra measure of your love for them. Amen. Amen. Please join me in honoring our country, first the American flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, a free power, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Now the Texas flag. Honor, Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Husbands. Thank you, Mrs. Haynes. We appreciate your participation tonight. Item number two, awards recognition to uh, a citizen's participation. Do we have anyone that is registered tonight? Okay. Thank you very much. We we'll move on. If I can, with the board uh, consent, move item number nine up in place after item two and before item three. Okay. There's no objection. We'll go ahead then. Item number nine, uh, A, naming of this principal of Ann K. Snyder Elementary School. Dr. Stark. Well, I'm always excited to bring a recommendation to the board for a new principal to begin in our district. And I'm very excited about the two recommendations I'm going to make tonight. And the first recommendation is for our very first principal of Ann K. Snyder Elementary School. And that is Lindsay Ardwan. It's the Cajun pronunciation, by the way, <laughs> correct? Uh, and she's an assistant principal at Burnham Woods, and I uh, very uh, happily recommend her for your consideration. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, raise your hand. All those opposed, there is none. Congratulations. <laughs> Dr. Stockton, President Sanders, and members of the board, I just wanted you to know I'm extremely grateful for this opportunity and honored to be the new principal in Case Snyder Elementary School. I'm looking forward to instilling a strong academic foundation in our students as well as opening our doors in August with a warm welcome to all of our new families. Thank you very much. I also wanted to introduce my family that's with me tonight. My husband of 10 years, Gary, my six-year-old daughter, Hallie, and my three-year-old son, Heath. Without their support, I wouldn't be here. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Thank you. of Conroe High School ninth grade campus, Dr. Stock. Okay, I, I, again, I'm very excited to make uh, this recommendation to you. It's, it's someone I believe you all know. And uh, my recommendation for the principal of the new Conroe High School ninth grade campus uh, is Mr. Jeff Stickler. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Raise your hand. All opposed? There is none. Congratulations, Mr. Taylor. Dr. Stockton, Mr. Sanders, school board, thank you very much for this. This is a great privilege and honor 
Um, I really enjoy Conroe, the city of Conroe, the community, and Conroe High, and I can't think of a better way to continue to work with both of those, but being the principal of the ninth grade campus, so thank you. At this time, I'd like to introduce my wife, Melanie, my son, Cullen, and my daughter, Kylie. They both go to Rice Elementary. My hand overrules your hand. Uh, I, I want to uh, make a special mention of, uh, I, I actually introduced you inc incorrectly. I should have said Dr. Jeff Stickler. Congratulations, I'm proud of you. Congratulations. Long from the swimming pool. Yes, sir. Congratulations, Jeff. Congratulations. It's hilarious. All right, those are always great to start with. All right, item three, consent agenda. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor, raise your hand. Opposed? All right. Item 4A. 2013-2014 calendar approval. Dr. Stockton. I'll ask uh, Dr. Chris Hines to come and present the, the recommendation for the 2013-14 calendar. Good evening, President Sanders, members of the board, Dr. Stockton. Uh, each year we, we come forward with a recommendation for school calendars. Uh, last November, the um, district level and planning committee uh, met and came up with two different school calendar options. We called draft A and draft B. We had them up on the web um, throughout till our January meeting of the district planning committee. In January, we met um, and unanimously, the committee recommends uh, for your adoption, draft calendar A. And so tonight we bring forward draft A for your consideration and recommendation for the 2013-2014 school calendar. So moved. Second. All right, we have motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? I just have one question. What kinds of um, the 79 and the 99 days, okay? I know that y'all are putting a pinch, but uh, and I know everybody prefers the full week off at Thanksgiving and so on and so forth, but how many days does a semester make and does it matter that much anymore? If, you know, I know the spring semester, how do I say it? The AP classes and the finals and the, or the cutoff time for AP, whatever. I, I understand that if, if you have 99 days in the second semester, that, then that may be an advantage. I'm, I'm not sure. But at the end of the first semester, is it a disadvantage? Yeah, uh, the short answer is it's it's hard to say. <laughs> uh, the, 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 there was feedback both ways, and we had we had lots of public feedback. I mean, there are a lot of there are a lot of folks that, that that weighed in that really liked ending the semester before the holiday, and sure. that's and that's a major consideration. Uh, and probably we had more feedback in favor of that than the imbalanced number of days. But there was feedback from teachers that teach one semester classes and just the, there's a variance in days. But as you mentioned, the second semester, we have two weeks of AP testing. We also have several days of the STAR test that go into the spring. So we Brings lose a lot of instructional days in the springtime anyway. Uh, so the balance is not as great. It does create a pinch on the nine week periods. There are nine week periods that are not nine weeks, they're eight weeks. And then there's other ones in the spring that are 10 weeks. And so it does create some differences from a grading standpoint. Um, and there was there is a recognition of that. There's also the possibility that in the future, the legislature may uh, enable us to move back a week, which would, which would really help that imbalance issue. Uh, but I think the short of it is the discussion from the committee was weighing all of those pros and cons. They liked what we had this year and felt like Let's just do it again. This is a, this I am certainly in no position to argue with the committee, nor you, and I just wanted your opinion of that, and we can go over. Right. I, I just a quick question. What is January 6th? January 6th is a work day, okay. which we have at the 
uh, start of the new semester. Okay. All right. Any other discussion or questions? Discussion? All right. We have a motion and second. All in favor? And all opposed? Motion passes. All right. Item 4B, Innovative Course Approval College Transition. I'll ask Mrs. Drummond to come up, our, our Assistant Superintendent for Secondary Education, and present this item. Good evening, President Sanders, Dr. Stockton, and members of the board. I'm here this evening to ask your approval for us to add Education 1300, the dual credit course, which we would call College Transition, to our program of study. It's a unique opportunity for us to continue in our collaborative efforts with Lone Star College Montgomery. It's really a college survival course. It's a one semester elective. It does count for dual credit, so it would transfer as dual credit to Lone Star College. Some of the topics for our students would include barriers and paths to college success, time management, available college resources or campus resources, effective academic communication skills, career discovery, education major explorations, degree planning, and learning strategies for college courses. Uh, we will be working on the scope and sequence once we receive your approval, and we will offer that course this next year. Okay, is there a motion? Motion. Second. Second. Any discussion or questions? All right. All those in favor? All those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you. Item 5A, bond referendum update. Dr. Stockton? I'll ask Mr. Burns to come up and do the bond update. Good evening, Mr. Sanders, Dr. Stockton, members of the board. Uh, tonight we will start off with the Highland uh, Night Campus, Hanford Campus renovation. Early last week they started about raising, uh, erecting the structural steel for this project. Remember, this is where we uh, tore down the, most of the gyms, the existing gyms, moved the building over 65 feet and rebuilding. That is currently on schedule. Uh, Ann Snyder Elementary School. We're expecting to uh, take possession of the admin area about the first week in June. This is the interior finish is going on in the library. The um, rest of the building, the furniture, will be installed on or about the first week in July. Show this building plenty of time. Right now, all the interior finishes are the critical parts. Some exterior brickwork still going on, and site work or finished grading. John V. Pate uh, is almost the exact same position, still about 70% complete. Masonry, uh, roofing touch ups, and interior finishes going in. The, all the classroom wing, academic wing, has the ceiling grid in. The painting is pretty well complete. Uh, casework has already uh, started in the most of the classroom sections. This is the, one of the rooms here. The air will be turned on hopefully uh, by the end of the month and we start dropping seat on tile and carpet. There again, it's uh, it's on schedule as of uh, originally hoped to. Next 14. Uh, this is the uh, parking lot uh, reinforcing farming work, farm work going on. We're going to pad. For ground. This school is open, the schedule to open up in August of 2014. Flex 16, this is an aerial of the site, 16 acre site. The pad work is uh, commenced, parking lot uh, subgrades are being cut. That's good surveying crew out there. Uh, this building also is scheduled to open uh, in August of uh, 14. That's it. Can we go back to the uh, the first school at, uh, at so the, eight, the ninth grade camp? Okay. okay. Sorry, long way around. I would have to ask about the first one, wouldn't? I? That's okay. Fine. Okay. Okay. Now, this is. Uh, <coughs> What, what are we looking at here? This is That's the rest remains of the, the two gyms. Okay, and and so left to build there. We we did this in section in 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 parts. <laughs> yes, sir. And so the room is finished. Okay, well, then the foreground back over here to the right. Okay, 
and we're we're adding a bunch of different. Th what I'm asking is, what all what all is left to build there? We do a parking lot on the far side, a road around. Parking lot on the far side is complete. Okay. The road, fire road, bus bus lane around the rear is uh, being done this summer. Okay. Uh, and a new tie-in. Is this the last of the structural? Okay. There is some cosmetic stuff we'll be doing this summer, which is phase two. The cafeteria, some of the ceramic tile flooring. We're also going to be removing some of those walls to make it look uh, more open. Somewhat like we did at Conwell High School, because that worked out so well for supervision. And so we decided to do the same thing here. If they get a little bit more room, that's I have three campus, but the supervision is much easier. Okay. Thank you. I, I just, I was kind of lost, even though I've been there before. Okay. This is in between those two wings, the part that you had to bring up or take down or I'm, I'm not even sure I want to know but it, 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 we're starting the middle building back out to catch both ends that makes any sense no it doesn't but it, 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 <laughs> I've seen you tear everything down but the brick and put it put two by fours up to hold it up so I believe it. before mr. Byrne sits down and we go to something else I do want to introduce the board and, and some of you've met um, Sanford Foster, uh, Easy Foster. He's our new, uh, proved by you just a few minutes ago, our new director of planning and construction. And uh, just wanted to introduce you. Yeah. Mr. Sanders, Dr. Stockton, members of the board, I want to just say how thankful I am for being even considered for the position. I hope I don't disappoint and have a long and, and a fun career here. Great. Thank you. Thank Glad you. to have you. Yeah. Yeah. Glad to have you. Glad to have you. Thank you, Mr. Foster. Appreciate that. Easy. Yeah. Construction's going to be in easy hands. Easy job. <laughs> I couldn't resist. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Item number six, uh, A, financial reports. That's Mr. Rice, our director of finance, to come up and make the presentation. Good evening, President Sanders, members of the board, Dr. Stockton. I'm here to present the financial statements for the district as of January 31st. Uh, these statements will represent our general fund, debt service, child nutrition, and self-funded insurance. Uh, the first uh, schedule we're looking at is our balance sheet. It shows our assets, liabilities, and fund balances for each one of the funds. Uh, one of the things we always like to look at is uh, our cash and investments. As you can see, the majority of our funds are invested in, in the pools. Also, our largest revenue generator are our property taxes. We always look to see how those are coming in. We're, we're slightly behind where we were last year, but we're pretty comparable. Still feel comfortable there. Uh, the next statement is our income statement. It shows our revenues and expenditures. And if we look at our local revenues, once again, we'll see that property taxes are our largest generator of revenues. Uh, for, for the general fund and debt service, food service, we have food sales. And, and if self-funded, it's a premium contribution. Then we can look at our expenditures at the functional level. Uh, in the in the general fund, we're showing a projected increase right now of five hundred ninety-eight thousand dollars. As uh, the tax uh, revenues start rolling in, that will generate uh, our surplus at the end of the year transfer debt service, and leading into that. Our debt service shows a projected decrease, but that should that decrease should decrease as the uh, tax revenues roll. In. Uh, child nutrition fund balance, uh, just a slight projected increase in that fund. Our self-funded insurance uh, plan for the year, we've had total revenues of eleven point eight million dollars, uh, expenses of thirteen point eight million dollars, for a, a net loss currently of two million dollars. Uh, now on the health and wellness center. 
The participation has been pretty steady. We're averaging about 654 participants. So uh, that's going very well. They're, they're running at close capacity there. A 2008 bond referendum. We've sold $441 million of the $527 million referendum. We have $86 million left to sell. We've currently expended and encumbered $419 million. We have an estimated to complete of $33 million for a total projected forecast of $453 million, leaving us with some contingency somewhere in the range of uh, 73 million. Our investments at the end of January. Uh, beginning of the month, we had $350 million invested as tax revenues are starting to come in pretty heavily. Uh, that increased to $445 million. Uh, weighted average maturity is one day since it's in the pools. Uh, unfortunately, the yield to the maturity is still low. But as comparison to our benchmark, we are performing better than our benchmark. Yes, sir. Since we consistently have a surplus, why do we, or why should we not, why should we, can we, or should we look at the investments in even anything, even treasuries? I mean, I know we're limited by certain, certain functions, but <coughs> even treasuries. How long are we going to wait for, for, for the yield curve to change before we take some of our money out of one day? Duration, and and you know if we had fifty million invested in a longer term item, we could we could <laughs> more than double our earnings. Yeah, uh, Mr. Cox and I have been you know look, looking at that and looking at other alternatives that are out there. You know, just just right now with the with the slightest yield gain that you get, kind of feeling that the risk was a, a little much. We have been looking at those alternatives. So what are we looking at? What kind of yield difference are we talking about, and, and what have you been looking at? Uh, there's a lot of um, CDs that you can purchase. You can do some CD purchases. Um, it's called uh, Cedars. But you can go out and you can purchase CDs that do, do present you with a higher, a higher yield out there, but there is risk involved with those. But if you go out and you, you buy additional treasuries, what we're invested in the pools are, you know, they're with treasuries, they're agencies. They're in the same instruments that we could purchase, you know, through our own investment policy. So, uh, you know, we are we are kind of in the same yield curve as those. Okay. We can talk about it more later. Okay. Any questions, Mr. Rush? <laughs> All right. Okay, excuse me. Item eight is executive session, which I don't believe took care of the naming of the principal. He did, yes, sir. Good, so okay. So we'll item nine we've already done, so we'll move on to item ten. Item ten. The next item on the agenda is the board's consideration of an appeal. That's correct. Appeal of an expulsion order. Filed under CISD policy FOD, pursuant to the Texas Government Code sections 551.8082 and 551.0821, this hearing will be closed to the public as it involves the discipline of public school children and personally identifiable information about a student will be revealed by the board's deliberation. The time is now 625. All those in the audience not directly involved in this matter are now excused and asked to leave. We'll take about a five-minute break.